today we are uh, very honored and delighted to be here, which is a, a very important day, we think. Um, and we all what uh, we hear and what we learn is uh, very, very interesting. Um, I will do a quick... Ca can you hear me? Yes. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I will do a quick uh, overview of um, what we do um, at the French IMF um, on what works in financial education. Uh, first of all, our view is that the approach should combine more than one tool to be effective and also be a mix of a wide range of educational contents distributed through various channels, internet, TV, radio, social media, etc. That said, our approach um, at the IMF in financial education is a mix of warning, informing, training, and explaining. Uh, warning. The IMF um, regularly issue a warning on um, unregulated um, financial service providers, unregulated products, uh, which are um, marketed in the French market, and um, fr also fraud, really fraud. Um, in each um, warning, we always um, repeat um, basic financial rules and basic common sense rules so that people are more aware, so that people can more understand the risks they take. So they are warning, and we have also warning, um, for example, um, against the forex market with the Prudential Supervisory Authority, um, which, which, um, with, um, which we partner to inform the public against that market with a blacklist of unregulated um, providers uh, in that market. So we warn people. Also, we have uh, inform and explain activities. For example, our director, Nathalie Le Maire, is um, uh, regularly interviewed in the radio or on TV. And um, that have a great impact because um, those interviews are um, broadcasted at lunch or dinner time so that people uh, could hear those interviews. Since 2011, we have also um, a very popular um, uh, programs, TV programs, uh, which are two minutes program informing people about, uh, for example, um, fees of products, uh, again, uh, the, danger, uh, the dangers of the forex market for uh, retail investors, or for example, how to complain. And for that, for that programs, um, they are also broadcasted on very popular channels in France and at very easy time for people to, to hear them. Uh, we have also educational guides and uh, internet pa pages published, particularly on our websites on a um, specific area, area dedicated to retail investors and, again, explaining how market works, giving details on financial products, giving also um, interactive tools like quizzes and calculators so that people can easily have access to, that, uh, to, that, to those tools. We have also at the IMF a consumer helpline um, who is operating since June 2010 with a team of five people who, who answers each day to um, public queries, public uh, questions, and, relay, and um, we have to say that we have uh, almost 900 queries each month. So it is a, a, a big challenge. <laughs> And the IMF also attends uh, savers and stake shareholders exhibition. For example, each year in October, there is a big, um, a big event for shareholder, shareholders and listed companies in Paris, in Paris, which name is Actionaria. And the IMF, uh, like, like um, listed company, 
um, who, who are there. Uh, the IMF have also a stand with um, IMF staff who answer savers and uh, shareholder questions. That was for the informing and explaining part. And what about the training part of our activities? Because um, training is also important in the educational uh, activities. For example, and that is uh, that that was a very good uh, example of that um, activities. The IMF has strong relationships with 14 key consumer associations, and organized training courses in Paris and in the reg regions, because we think also that we have to be local. Um, and we organized. Uh, uh, 22 days of training and trained more than 600 people in two years. And the training programs again um, were about uh, the presentation of the IMF 3 meet, um, uh, training on savings uh, subjects like uh, how to invest properly, how to be aware of frauds, um, etc. We have also training sessions for uh, individual shareholders because we, mm, we were uh, aware of the fact that individual shareholders in France um, have specific needs and specific questions. So since two years, we organize uh, specific sessions for that particular uh, people. And uh, also at investor events like the event Actionaria in uh, this is not in October, but in November in France. Uh, the IMF presents also conferences and also quizzes so that people could assess their competencies and capabilities. And that was my overview about what we do. And now I want to give the floor to Florence Korn, who will uh, present you uh, our new internet campaign to make people aware against, um, against the dangers of Forex. Yeah, uh, the AMF launches on the 13th of October its first mass market uh, publicity campaign on the internet to warn uh, individual investors of the dangers of uh, forest market trading. Uh, in fact, we were alerted uh, by a growing number of complaints from investors and also many advertisements for investors to trade in the online forex, uh, foreign exchange market. So we began uh, an online publicity campaign to increase uh, public awareness on the risks of trading uh, in the forex market. Uh, we have also published uh, at the same time an exclusive study that evaluates returns from individual forex investment for the first time. And uh, the study shows that nearly 90% of investors, for, of individual investors, lose their money on this market, which is very huge. So we are, will now focus on the mechanisms of uh, this uh, internet campaign. Uh, uh, this campaign targets people who might be interested by the foreign forex internet advertising by using the same uh, arguments and the same visual codes than those advertising, which you can show on uh, these banners. And when uh, the cybernaut clicks on the banner, it uh, then says quickly uh, to him with a window uh, pop-up page that the AMF save, uh, uh, saves the day. And it sends uh, him uh, to our website to learn more with educational tools of uh, the dangers of foreign uh, forex market. So, what are the goals of uh, this campaign for the AMF? First of all, uh, we launched that online publicity campaign to increase public awareness of the risks of trading in that market with, with educational contents 
on our website explaining the risks of forex trading, including a hundred educational videos which you can see, uh, personal experiences, interactive graphics, grocery, FAQ, so a wide variety of information. It aims also to make known uh, the AMF's divisions uh, dedicated to retail investors, particularly our helpline and the mediation. Finally, it aims also to increase the fame of our uh, pages dedicated to retail investors on our websites. We have uh, first results. Uh, on the first week, uh, we had nearly 4,000 clicks on the banners and an increase of 40% of the visits on our website, which is uh, good for us. Thank you for your attention. Portuguese Securities Market Commission and I would like to thank for the invitation to be here today and talk about the Portuguese National Plan for Financial Education. My presentation is based on three principles, the reason behind the exception of the financial literacy program, the National Plan for Financial Literacy, its governance model, mission and main objectives and the current and future projects. So, uh, the purpose for the inception of the national plan. Decision to create the national plan for financial literacy was based on the verification and analysis of several factors. First of all, I could mention the proliferation of financial instruments that are becoming increasingly complex and marketed to retail investors who don't have the capacity to assess, to assess the risks. Service and studies undertaken by the Portuguese Securities Commission and the Central Bank of Portugal highlighted the need for financial literacy regarding uh, diverse issues, many of which are relevant for the population in general. Complaints and inquiries are an important source of information. In that said, identify key areas wherein major gaps and needs for intervention exist. Other benchmarks, like the indebtedness of Portuguese families, that show an increase of indebtedness, and the savings benchmark, that show a drop in savings of the Portuguese families, were also relevant. Finally, the experience and international best practices that raise awareness and promote financial, no, financial education were also considered. We may refer the role played by international organizations like the OECD and the European Union that have been developing a large amount of work in promoting financial, financial education. So, the, uh, the National Plan for Financial Education. I, to, to talk about the National Plan for Financial Education, first I have to introduce uh, na the National Council for Financial Supervisors. This, is, this entity is formed by the Portuguese financial regulators, the Central Bank of Portugal, the Portuguese Securities Commission, and the Insurance and Pension Funds Authority. The main role of this entity is to coordinate these three supervisors and to evaluate the development in terms of financial stability. So the decision to create the National Plan for Financial Education uh, is based on a five-year program from 2011 to 2015. The plan is an important instrument for inclusion in financial literacy and aims to define the general guidelines for promoting financial education at a national level by including and coordinating endeavors and projects from several entities and implementing its own initiatives. The first challenge the plan faced was defining the concept of financial literacy. The plan later adopted uh, the most quoted definition uh, that is of the National Foundation for Education Research according to which financial literacy is the ability to make informed judgments and to take effective decisions regarding the use and management of money. The national plan comprises the entire civil society of Portugal. 
The government's model is based on the structure composed for four bodies. The coordinating committee that is responsible for defining guidelines and coordinating the implementation of the plan. This uh, um, coordinating committee is composed of the members from the three regulators, the central bank, uh, CMVM, and the uh, insurance and pensions fund authority. Then we have two monitoring committees, where the first one is responsible for contributing to the provision of resources and to the promotion of projects in the area of financial education. And the second one is responsible for identifying priorities and educational lead, uh, needs. Finally, we have, the, we have the advisory board that, is constitu that constitutes a forum for reflection and initiatives to be developed under the plan. The monitoring committees and the advisory board are composed of public entities, universities, associations of the financial sector, consumers' rights association, and even some uh, ministries from the government of Portugal. The key task of the plan is that of contributing towards increasing the general public level of financial literacy and promoting the implementation of appropriate financial behavior by means of an integrated approach to financial education projects and the combined efforts by interested parties, thereby contributing to increasing the general public's well-being and ensuring stability in the financial system. The main objectives that plan purports to, to the objectives that the plan purports to attain can be arranged under five main levels. The first one is to improve financial knowledge and attitudes. The second one is to encourage financial inclusion, develop saving habits, promote responsible borrowing options, and to create precautionary habits. Mentioning the projects that are already developed, I can mention from its establishment in 2011 up to the present, the plan has developed a vast range of activities among the Portuguese population, focusing especially on Portuguese youngsters. The first uh, activity we launched was the Todos Contam Gateway, that uh, is an instrument for sharing information and materials. Its contents are transversal to all areas of retail financial markets and are written in a clear language and organi organized by topics. We also organized the Todos Contam uh, competition that has the support of the Ministry of Education and Science and its main objective is to promote and to encourage schools to develop financial projects. We have the Financial Literacy Day that is celebrated tomorrow for the third consecutive year. This is an occasion where stakeholders of the plan join to raise awareness of the population in general to financial education. Bearing in mind the importance of financial education at schools, the Ministry of Education and Science associated with the plan and drew up the core competencies for financial education. This document has the guidelines for implementing financial education within learning and training context in schools. And it is a document or these guidelines can be used in very diverse contexts and are extremely flexible to teachers. Following the approval of these guidelines, uh, the Ministry of Education, with the support of the financial regulators, initiated a program for training teachers which aim is to train teachers from uh, the, the principal uh, uh, zones of Portugal to, te to teach uh, uh, financial education at schools. Other important milestone of the plan is the celebration of a protocol with associations of the financial sector. The financial supervisors have been funding all investor education activities since 2001 from their own budget. This year, the plan signed a protocol agreement with the main financial sector associations, which are also plan stakeholders, in order to help fund school supplies, for example, school books and on financial education. At last, I would like to refer the participation for the second consecutive year of the plan in the Global Money Week, that is an initiative by Child and Youth Finance, Finance International. 
currently we are developing a platform for distance learning, uh, it's Ori Learning, where training sessions will be available on video with a text presentation of the main topics of financial literacy. Finally, uh, the main drawback is plans assessment. The evaluation method of the plan is an integrated part uh, of the plan itself. However, this evaluation may be difficult due to a variety of factors, such, su such as its in innovative uh, character, the concept of financial education itself, and the measurement of the impact. However, these difficulties should not prevent evaluation of the plan. There are various types of indicators and methodologies that can be used, and in addition, the object of the evaluation should be vast and diversified covering the plan as a whole, as well as the different projects of the various types of objectives. Thus, evaluation should be carried out on three types of, object of objectives. The functional objectives, like the implementation, where we uh, want to correct and timely implement the initiatives of the plan. The immediate objectives, the financial knowledge, where the assessment of progress in terms of financial knowledge can be carried out through questionnaires. And main objectives, like financial behavior. The evaluation of the adoption of more responsible financial behavior could be carried out through questionnaires in, of a general character or aimed at certain groups. Edward, I'm gonna ask you to, to wrap it up, please. Before okay, I'm, real, I'm finished. Thank you. Analysis of results er, of questionnaires and surveys. Uh, we're preparing a second survey uh, for the next year, um, so we can um, so it can serve a, an as an indicator for the evaluation of the plan itself by enabling uh, a comparison with the literacy levels recorded in the previous uh, surveys. I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm available to any question you may want to ask. So let's begin. So this is our brand for financial education initiatives. It is, uh, well, it's in Lithuanian. It's Pinigubite, um, which is money bee. Uh, well, we know that uh, bees are very good with uh, saving uh, honey for winters and etc. So that's why we chose this symbol as a, a symbol of uh, financial education. And there is a three initiatives. Uh, the first one, the biggest one, it's a broad initiative for broad public. And there is uh, two initiatives that are focusing on um, youth. It's uh, money B for youth and money B for teachers. And there is, um, well, there are just two people that are working on financial education in the Central Bank of Lithuania. So apparently, of course, we cannot do everything by ourselves. That's why we have initiative of collaboration uh, committee that involves uh, vast uh, members from uh, private sector, uh, such as um, banking sector, um, insurance sector, pension sector, other NGOs, of course, consumers, organizations. Um, and governmental um, members of government. And um, so we have meetings every uh, three months to t see what kind of collaboration we can uh, develop, what kind of initiatives are effective, uh, or what, what our private sector is planning to, to do, so as us. And of course, we cannot go without a website for financial education. So it's a um, very broad website, which is on personal finances, uh, investor education. Um, there is a lot of information on fraud, uh, what you should know before making an investment. So there is a lot of information. Of course, there's the challenge how to um, how people get to know this information, how to promote this uh, uh, website. So, but basically, it's more of a challenge of um, funding. And as we see financial education as a very broad um, activity, uh, there was also a campaign um, launched uh, at the beginning of this year. It's uh, "Be Careful Alone," uh, basically not to sleep on sleep on the loan. 
And uh, there, was, uh, there were a lot of um, partners, uh, over 18 ma media partners. We had 12 radio shows, more than 150 articles uh, all over Lithuania because we have very a lot of small regions. And so we're happy that those regions were uh, part of this uh, campaign. And um, it basically was focused on uh, taking care of your debt and over -depthness. And just be careful, um, especially with consumer credits. And this um, initiative uh, was um, provided by um, Money B for Youth and Money B Week for Youth. Um, it took place last year uh, in November. And um, the idea was to give um, virtual lesson for uh, youth and we choose as a platform the biggest um, news uh, media or, or how you call that uh, portal, uh, Delphi, and uh, we put there uh, those videos. That if you are interested, I can uh, give you links afterwards. Uh, there, it was on personal finances. Uh, there was also a um, um, video on how to be careful with loan and uh, of course, what to do with your savings if you have um, accumulated them. And there was a financial education test, literacy test, basically. Uh, there were over almost 4,000 uh, participants that actually um, entered the test online. And of course, uh, more than 100 schools that uh, during that week, they had lessons uh, where they showed those three, three videos and also were engaged to to, um, to entry the online uh, test. Mm. So yeah, so also there is um, those uh, lessons, they are available and um, teachers that teach economics, they're using the, uh, to, to make uh, their lessons more um, interesting. And of course, we are a member of um, Child and New Finance International, and we that was the second year that we enrolled Global Money Week uh, uh, in Lithuania, and uh, we had over 100 lessons, um, meetings, tests, contests. Uh, there were over 8,000 children that were involved, and last year. Uh, we decided to, to uh, launch this uh, week in um, NASDAQ OMX stock market just to, to show um, children that they should be also interested in the investment part. Uh, and this is the small all, all. so it's, um, it's going to be a, a symbol of our financial education initiatives for children. Uh, it was chosen by themselves, so um, yeah. And, um, as I said, we cannot make this on our own, so we have uh, a lot of partners. Um, so you see that there is governmental institutions, private sector uh, entities, um, educational entities. We are happy, really happy that we have a great uh, relationship with education, Ministry of Education. That's why we are able to uh, implement our initiatives at schools. And what our constraints are, so we still don't have national strategy on financial education. There is a lack of political will to do that, to do that, to push forward this idea. Um, and well, well, we as a central bank, uh, currently we take that uh, part as we, we act as a leader on financial education, but uh, we feel that it should be uh, um, a national matter, not just uh, a matter of um, one institution. Mm, as I said before, uh, we have collaboration committee, but it's based on um, their own will to, to make projects with us, um, to have any other initiatives and sometimes you feel that um, they really decide whether it's interesting for them on in regard of social responsibility campaigns and everything so you cannot rely on 100 percent of our of on them uh, yes and of course if we have um, collaboration with private sector we also have to aware of a conflict of interest so all those initiatives that we are uh, carrying out, they have to be uh, very um, objective 
and without any conflict of interest. So far, we succeeded, but uh, every time that's a matter you have to tackle. And, of course, funding. It goes uh, back to the first one, lack of political will and lack of uh, strategy on financial education, because um, because of that, uh, other uh, governmental institutions, they don't have an um, amount of funding allocated for financial education. So that's why they cannot, uh, you know, they join us, but on very um, light, I don't know, stage. And um, what's next? So, of course, we are very glad that we are we joined already PISA 2015, and we have we're going to have a base for uh, implementing financial education in schools, because uh, well, how you implement financial education without any uh, reason? And I think that uh, in 2016 we're going to have pretty bad results. It's the first um, in survey that was carried out in schools on financial education, and those bad results, uh, they, it's going to be a first, you know, a push up uh, for doing something actually. And of course we're going to have a national survey on Lithuanian residents, we did that already in 2012, we're going to repeat that in 2015, I hope it's going to be a part of OECD um, survey, um, I don't know how to call that, um, uh, round. Um, because we really want to see how we look, uh, you know, in comparison with Estonia, Latvia, and any, any other countries. Um, next year, we're going to have a big, um, big uh, project on national TV. We'll see how it's going to go, and we plan to um, to implement collaboration action plan 2015-2020, and just to to put the guidelines how we're going to work with uh, other uh, private and, and uh, governmental sectors entities and um, we try to we're going to try to to put this action plan to <coughs> to, to uh, the base should be uh, teachable moments we still have problems how to uh, translate that to lithuanian because there is no uh, such um, term teachable moments but we're going to try to do that, and one interesting thing that we try to implement, to develop uh, at first, it's um, uh, creative partnerships. Uh, there is a program that is in Europe, it's called Creative Partnerships, and there is a, uh, one part of, um, there is an entity that works uh, with that in Lithuania. And we think, we strongly believe that financial education should not be a boring topic, uh, it has to be very interesting for it to, be, uh, to work. Um, to be successful, um, that's why we're going to try to find those ways how to uh, teach financial education in a creative way. So thank you for your attention. Um, I'm going to pl briefly play the uh, two-handed economist here. Um, uh, a year ago, Richard Cordray, the director of the U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, was speaking to a group of bankers, and he said, quote, as the financial marketplace has grown more complex, we have made an enormous mistake by not placing a consistent and sustained emphasis on financial education. He said, every year we send thousands of young people out into the world to survive on their own with little or no training in the kinds of decisions they must make to succeed financially. Cordray called this a self-defeating approach in a free market economy and said that we need to recognize that the best form of consumer protection is self-protection. But how do we get there? The famed behavioral economist Richard Thaler on the other hand, said, we shouldn't fool ourselves into thinking that adding a household finance class to a high school curriculum will in itself create knowledgeable consumers who can understand today's wide array of financial products. He then went on to cite the meta-analysis that both Gary and Mick earlier cited, the Fernandez, Lynch, Niedemeyer analysis, in which they basically said that while financial education is laudable, it's not particularly helpful. Those who receive it do not perform noticeably better when it comes to saving more, for example, or avoiding ruinous debt. Even the most depressed, the even, even more depressing, the results of efforts aimed at low-income people are particularly weak. Those who need the help most seem to benefit the least. So what is the middle ground? Uh, in the uh, conclusions to their analysis, um, Niedermeyer et al. said, 
that while uh, there's no single panacea or perfect solution th to uh, solving the financial education quandary, there's three types that seem to work, three efforts seem to work. The first is just-in-time decision-making. As learning dec decays quickly, it's best to provide assistance just before a decision is made, just before the loan is taken out, just before the mortgage is taken out. Secondly, another approach, rule of thumb. Last year, Annette Shore, Antoinette Shore from MIT shared with us here at ESMA on our first financial education day, investor education day, a, a test or a study that she had done in which she uh, uh, studied some uh, micro entrepreneurs in the Dominican Republic and she gave one group some basic accounting principles in how to, how to uh, manage their, phones, their funds. A second group, she simply gave them rules of thumb, i.e., when uh, dividing your business money from your personal money, you have two separate drawers. The latter would led to much better outcomes. So this seemingly trivial concept helped small business owners there keep track of the businesses better. The third and final approach, and one that resonates with us here in a room full of regulators, is that in which we try to make the financial system more user-friendly. As Stephen said this morning, we don't need to be medical doctors before visiting a doctor, but providing basic tools in terms of understanding how we can improve our health, improve our lifestyle, that too can be, the analogy can be transferred to the financial services uh, uh, system in order to better understand how we can prov provide for our, well, our financial well-being. So we're delighted to have with us today Julie, um, again, struggle with Lawrence, sorry, Eduardo, uh, Toma, Gary, and Mick. And I think I'd like to make this as interactive as possible. So I'll just launch into the first question and then let you, the audience, uh, begin to ask the others. And if we can keep our interventions short uh, or our responses short given the time constraints. Um, this, the first question I'd like to ask um, this group, and maybe you could use your name place if you'd like to t uh, take on the question. When building financial education programs to shape behavior, how important is the timing of the education that precedes a financial decision? Any takers on that one? Well, uh, I will just talk about um, the last campaign we had on uh, debt. So we chose the timing for, for the campaign, to launch the campaign, because um, uh, the beginning of the year is re really tough for, for households because there is a lot of uh, celebration and, and uh, spending for, for Christmas. And afterwards, they have really a lot of problems with uh, their personal finances or overusing their uh, credit cards and everything. So that's why we chose to be careful to at least to, uh, to see whether to shop around, whether there is another loan which is cheaper for them. And just that's what, how to, to, um, um, to look after themselves. So uh, the thing is with uh, those, um, with financial education, education activities and initiatives is um, you have to provide information on those teachable moments when they are really in need. Um, for example, uh, when you go for a personal loan or a mortgage, then you need your, the information. Then you need, to, and it, it has to be as simple as it can be for you to understand. So yeah. it's dif difficult to make financial information simple, but it's very important. And I would say uh, exactly what everyone has said, and that is a teachable, teachable moment, just in time, uh, point of sale. Uh, and that's what the meta-analysis said. That, that's the time. But that's also, that's the time we say, now you have my attention. You know, I don't need to know high school geometry until I take the test. And after I leave geometry, I never need to know it again, unless you're going to do uh, artillery for the Army or build a building. But the problem with just in time is, Who's going to give that education just in time? It's going to be the seller, the conflict of interest, the clear conflict of interest, and therein lies the challenge for the regulators. Just in time works, and who's going to do the just in time and trying to deal with the obvious conflict of interest? Yes, if you could uh, ask the question, introduce yourself as well, please. Thanks. My, my name is Niels Lemmers. I'm from the Dutch Investor Association. Um, we are thinking of two things. The first one is 
on the just-in-time management. Why not expand the just-in-time moment by using the consumer protection of three days after you buy a house, you can just give back the keys. So when you have a financial product, give them three days to rethink it and maybe without cost or any liabilities, uh, give it back to the, the seller or the, or the advisor. That's the first question. The second question is, should there be something like a stop, hold on button, which you can press um, when you are in contact with a financial advisor to, to get to somebody else for a second opinion? Um, would that be helpful? And the question, of course, is who has to put down that button on the desk when you're sitting there? Is that the seller with the, of course, conflict of interest, or should it be um, mandatory? So should it be a mandatory rule? Those two questions, maybe for, for Gary, because he's, uh, he's very uh, active on that one, and also Mick, and maybe one of the other uh, regulators, because if it's mandatory, it's getting on your desk. With, with respect to the, uh, gosh, uh, the push the button, there's a great article out that's entitled, Why Don't We Just Put Electrodes in Their Heads? <laughs> you know, so when they get to, mm, mm, you know, yeah. So, so again, uh, great in theory, but when is that time? And how do you motivate, inspire, lead, direct, manage people making, uh, seeking information? And certainly, gosh, anything that helps a consumer, giving them more options and giving a chance to revisit, rethink their decision. But then what's the magic three days, four days, five days? And then, as I was saying, from the industry's perspective, you got someone who's, who, who could potentially game the system. Well, let me see how things go for three days. If it works, I'm going to sell. And if it doesn't, I'm going um, to... Mm, I'll get out of it. So some, some challenges, some challenges even with that, I, I think. But to be clear, I'm very much in favor of anything that, that helps and that protects the consumer, as we all are. Yeah, um, can, can I deal with the two points? I mean, the, the idea of having a three-day cooling off period. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure why consumer, given all the disadvantages that we've just described, would actually be any, would be any better placed to understand the risks and rewards relate, relating to a financial product after three days, if, if they're not aware of them at the, at the point of sale. So I'm not quite sure if a, a cooling off period in, in that sense would actually be effective. Now, I, I, mean, I do support the idea of just-in-time interventions, but I think this, is, this, this can be effective at two levels. Really, there's the there's the just-in-time version where, where you know, if you if the right intermediaries, if the right choice editors, intervene at important life stage events, you know, I mean, the, the really one of the few, one of the few lessons we can we we can learn from the literature, is that uh, if if financial if financial education is to have any chance of being effective, then it is really really important that people are receptive, you know, they are primed to actually receive. And understand the information, and that tends to happen at uh, two stages. Really, you know, key events in people's lives like divorce or bereavement or marriage or whatever. You know, you know, but also at the point of sale. Now, I, I, I mean, again, I, I, I mean, I think just in time interventions at the point of sale can be effective, but this is where I would argue really they should be used as a defensive mechanism, really, and they should be focused on the behaviours of the the seller. Rather than the behaviours of the, the purchaser or the or the consumer, and the sort of thing I have in mind is, I mean, you know, you know, there there, there is merit, for example, in, in in creating what we call a a second line of defence for uh, for 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 investors, and that means that any advisor or salesperson who's recommending a product should be required by regulation to undergo a series of tests with the consumer to make the consumer to stop and think before they actually carry carry out the decision, before they execute the decision. So I think I think there are some techniques that can be that can be effective. But I think the one thing is clear, these things do not work over the long over the long term. They don't have a sustained effect. And that's why if they are going to work, you're going you have to focus on the behaviour of the sellers, not the behaviour of the buyer in most cases. I, I, <clears throat> Josina Kameling, CFA Institute. Uh, Mick, I just want to pick up on that last sentence of your on the behavioral aspect. And I think on the two sides, on the supply and on, 
on on the demand side, on, on the supply side, do you think, um, you know, the the whole thing with financial education is that you have to make it come alive. People think, oh, it doesn't apply to me, or this such situation doesn't apply to me. So in in the case of the supply side, um, where you have investment advisors giving a mea culpa publicly, saying, hey, I was a wrongdoer. I was a, one of the guys that, you know, did all these fees and commissions, and I knew what I was doing when I put you into a unit trust, and again, and again, and again, just to get the 3% commission, whatever. So this is one point. Then on the, um, on the consumer side, um, would it make it more lively, financial education, if you had case studies? Um, whereby they would see a situation where real people um, actually went into and showed what happened. I have a case in point in Spain with the preference share scandals. Um, we all know that agents, bank agencies sold to, um, to grandmothers preference shares who thought that was a wonderful idea, didn't have a clue. One of my uh, colleagues actually had the, his grandmother suffer this case. And I think, you know, when you think of the term, grand, my grandmother suffered this, it becomes more immediate. Uh, my own mother uh, <laughs> invested uh, with nice ladies. Um, they had a group, uh, I think they were coffee. They loved the coffee in a bank. So they went to this bank and they got biscuits, which was wonderful. And they made an investment fund called Goldfinger. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? They lost 60% of their holdings. And she said to me, why didn't you tell me? I said, you thought the, the cakes were wonderful. Now, that, that really is behavioral analysis. and It involves cakes, you know, and that's, a, you know, that's, a, that's an even difficult, more difficult problem. I mean, I, I mean the, the thing of mea culpa is really, really important, actually. But I think it's more more a case of sort of nostra culpa. You know, I mean, I think we all share the blame for this one. You know, I mean, consumers, regulators, and the industry. You know, so it isn't just a mea culpa on the part of the industry. I mean, we, we we all got it badly wrong. You know, and I think the more the sooner we we sort of own up to that, the better. And the sooner we realise why it went wrong, the better. You know, if, if we don't accept, you know, the causes, then we'll never we'll never fix it. So I, I completely take your point. I mean, I, um, I mean, one of the things I. Uh, one of the things I would say is case studies can be very helpful, but again, it comes back to the problem about who's presenting the case studies and, and how and how and where and when do you present the case studies as well. So I think I'm not quite sure how we, we would get around that problem. And the other uh, the other the other challenge is that uh, is that consumers have got a notoriously short memory span when it comes to things that harm them. You know, I mean by nature we are quite positive and optimistic, you know, and we, and we forget the pain, you know, and we, we sort of, you know, we look forward to a bright brand new day, you know, so I mean, uh, again, we have to be really careful about not relying on just demand side behaviour interventions to change market behaviour because on its own it doesn't, uh, it, it, it isn't sufficient. I mean, one of the, um, one of the interesting approaches is where, you know, regulators or educators can get important issues into soap operas, you know, and this is where the, the case study of the grandmother could be effective. But again, one of the one of the big problems there, I mean, I, I seem to recall when I when I worked at Witch, you know, years ago, you know, the biggest consumer group in Europe, we always tried to get our most popular soap operas to cover financial education issues. But we couldn't do it, of course, because there was something like 50 different charities we're trying to get their particular issue covered by the, the soap opera as well, whether it was cancer charities or children's charities or animal charities or whatever. There was a huge queue of civil society organisations were trying to get their case studies onto those programmes, you know. So it's a very it's a very crowded it's a very crowded field, I'm afraid, you know, and it's a big it's a big challenge, you know. It's a I'd like to, to bring the other panelists into the discussion as well. Would any of you like to respond to Jacina's uh, question? just like to respond to case studies it's um, really difficult to convince people to be a part of a case study because uh, when you lose or you are in debt and you have a lot of problems with for example debt or or bad uh, investment decisions uh, it's a psychological thing nobody wants to be a loser and nobody wants to be to, to as seen as a loser so we had those problems uh, we tried for our campaign, um, loan campaign, um, be careful with loan. Uh, we tried to convince some people to come out and, and say, you know, 
I have this and this problem and I want to overcome it, uh, overcome it, come it. And um, mm, yeah, nobody said, okay, I can do that publicly. That's a problem. You cannot make a case without public awareness. Good. I think we had a question in the front here. And if you can identify your organization, please. Okay. From uh, Financial Advisor of Association in Italy. Uh, <coughs> my, my question is very simple. What's the, the, what do you think about uh, the role of financial and uh, banking industry in providing program of uh, uh, financial education uh, versus uh, public or independent uh, body or uh, national authorities, for example? Um, we, we heard about conflict of interest, reputational problem. So how can be effective uh, a program in which uh, the banking or financial industry is uh, uh, viewed as uh, the, the main partner of this program? Good, good question to take on. Um, how um, how widely do we as regulators embrace the participation of the private sector in improving the investor education, investor literacy process? Who'd like to take that on for us, please? Sorry, it looks I'm speaking a lot. Well, um, we have a collaboration committee that involves private sector and those initiatives are very successful because we all agree what are the base rules are that it has to be without any marketing material except logos and everything and we really um, glad about or, or uh, encouraging and glad about uh, of work of y y OECD because they have guidelines on uh, how how it should be done, the private sector and, and um, financial education. So we try to, to use them to implement them in our daily work and we're gonna have a memori memorandum of collaboration 2015 where there are gonna be ground rules, how it has to be done, how we collaborate, so what are the rules, how it how the um, program is going to be evaluated. Uh, is there going to be a standard of uh, um, some kind of accreditation or um, how it's going to be monitored? So we try to, to look at it in a very broad scope to just to, um, you know, avoid the con conflict of interest. And so far we are really lucky. Uh, sometimes there are some people saying, I, I don't want to have a banking person going to my school and uh, teaching uh, my children about how to deal with personal finances. But, you know, you're going to have always such opinions, so you cannot, cannot avoid that. Mm, but the majority is really happy that there is someone who actually know what he talks about. Because there is, we are not product managers. We don't know everything. No, I'm, I must say I, I, I completely disagree. I mean, I think I, I don't see any role for uh, the banks or financial advisors in developing or delivering financial education programs. That They have to be independent and they have to be seen to be independent as well. The, uh, the perception is, is as important as the reality. Now, I think uh, that means really there's only, there's only public authorities really and regulators who can really genuinely deliver objective financial education programs. Now, I, mean, I think, uh, I think the, the, the job of trade associations and the banks is to make sure that their own staff are educated, are well trained and competent. You know, they should focus on their own staff, leave the public authorities to focus on consumers. They've got a big enough job making sure their staff are well trained and competent and financially educated. No, I mean, look. If uh, if individual financial advisors want to give, go along and volunteer and give pro bono advice to a citizens' advice bureau or whatever, that's a different matter. I mean, there are plenty of good examples in the UK where individual financial advisors do provide pro bono advice, and that's a worthwhile initiative. But I'm sorry, you know, there is no role for private sector finance institutions to have. NAC in the development or the, or the delivery or probably the funding 
of independent financial education programs. It doesn't work, it creates conflicts of interest, and it undermines the perception of independence of those programs as well. Good. Unless there's any other comments, I think if we had a question here in the front, and then we can turn to the, uh, to, to the middle. Thank you. My name is uh, Josep Soler from the Financial Studies Institute in Spain. <coughs> I'd like to make an, um, I was going to make an, another comment, but I, I, I would like to first to, to comment on, on what, what Mr. Um, McAteer um, has just mentioned. I mean, I think, okay, the prevention is all right for the participation of private uh, entities in uh, financial education projects, but uh, under uh, certain circumstances, there are different projects of volunteers coming from the uh, financial sector that did work uh, in a very positive way after the years. For instance, in Scotland, there is a very interesting um, project, Financial Education Partnership, that we are emulating a little bit in Spain, that people act, acting as volunteers with a material really controlled by educational authorities and by the partnership, really make a, a great job of um, expanding financial education in the schools. Um, but what I'd I like it to comment, sorry, I, I'm coming with, with the previous thing. Also, uh, coming from your very interesting uh, presentation, Mr. McAteer, I will say that if, if I understood well, you put in a, in a, kind, of, um, in a kind of balance the, the effect, uh, the cost, cost effect of one side to act in the offer policy, uh, intervention in the other side to, to spend the money in financial education projects. No? And you know, in, in sometimes maybe we can uh, try to learn also from the health prevention campaigns, where of course you need to, in a certain moment, to act w with vaccination campaigns or, or saying that the, to the people that you cannot smoke in the number of places, but it's nearly impossible to um, have full effects if you don't improve the understanding of the population that, for instance, they have to live a, a healthier life, no? may exercise and, and not eat uh, spe specific things, or n no uh, self-medications, eh? just uh, to put some examples. Um, I know, in any case, that some behavioral economists are very pessimistic. So, so, sorry, uh, if I can ask you to get to the question, because we yeah. have some other... The question like is that question. I would like to comment, uh, or to, to ask the final opinion of Mr. McCarthy, especially on this idea that really we should choose about regulation of financial education, or we can... The only possibility is really to, to work in both senses, no? Um, because, for instance, sorry, just briefly, when you talk about the on-time action, this is all right when you, you have a, a consumer action in a certain moment. There are things that are saving, but it's not just a problem of on-time activity. You need to promote a saving attitude all along your life, not in a certain moment. And you, you need to act in that moment with a, a real financial education campaign. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for. Uh, you're, you're one of the few people who can pronounce my name very well. I'm very impressed. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm Irish, by the way, not 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 Scottish, but but that's a. But um, yeah, I, I mean, look, I mean, as I say, I think volunteer programs can be very very effective. You know, and I, I would encourage volunteer programs. What I mean is that um, is that the banking industry or the the investment industry should not have any influence over the d design or the delivery of programs. But if individuals want to volunteer, then that's really good. That's really positive. Because what, what I, in my experience, what I've found is that, is a, you know, I, I don't think the people who work in financial services are bad people. I think the system is bad. And if you take those employees outside of the system, they become ordinary human beings again. <laughs> and they actually start to do the right thing. So if you, if you get them into a situation where they are genuinely providing help to people who need help, then they are, they are different people. Their attitudes are different, their incentives are different, their behaviours are different, and they actually they can make a really positive contribution. So I think volunteer programmes actually can, can work. Now, uh, uh, on the main question about the balance of interventions, I mean, again, this is, I mean, it's really, really interesting, and there, there are, you know, there are 
there are greater experts in this room than than than, than myself. You know, who, who who know much more about this. But if you if you if you look at some of the the most successful public awareness campaigns, say around smoking, or you know, seat belts in motor cars and and um, and public health campaigns like the the five a day campaign they have in the UK about where you should eat five pieces of fruit and vegetable every day. Now, the the smoking the smoking the interventions on smoking really only became effective once they were accompanied by very tough regulation. Because I mean, what what is very interesting? I mean, even going back in history, the majority of, the majority of the population were fully aware that smoking damaged your health. You know, the majority of the population, even in the UK, know something about this idea of eating five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. They know that. But that doesn't mean they actually they act on that. So this is why you know financial capability isn't just about awareness, but it's also about the behaviours and the attitudes and the propensity to act. So unless those public awareness campaigns are actually accompanied by tough regulation, tough intervention, they tend not to be successful in the long term. My argument is that this, you know that you have to get the sequence right, and you have to clean up the market first, and then public awareness campaigns might work in the long term. Thank you. I think we had a question here in the, the corner and then in the middle. If we, if we can just, just we can keep it short. We're running we're running short on time here. Um, with regards to roping in the financial services industry to educate, way back in 2009 we had issued a warning. Um, recalling Florence and uh, Julian, Julie's experiences uh, in regards to forex trading. But this was uh, in confrontation to the marketing effort that a particular financial services firm was engaging in to promote an investment product whose underlying assets uh, constituted senior life settlements. Um, uh, it was a very long ordeal pushing our message through. We uh, intervened in the media. The financial services firm that was pushing across this particular product felt that we were tarnishing their promotional effort. So quickly, quickly, they engaged an extern their external promoters to push in the media and confront literally our message. So as regards to funding, in, in regards to promotion, from their part, they were utilizing roadshows in grand hotels. So you can imagine the way how they were confronting their target audience. On our part, we were utilizing a one-pager on the newspaper in Maltese and in English to uh, address the retail audience. Look, you have to be uh, sure of what you are literally buying. Nowadays, um, the financial services compensation scheme has been uh, going through all the claims of luckily these Maltese investors that were deemed eligible to seek compensation, but uh, way back, we saw our message being literally challenged by this financial services firm. Over okay, to thank you. you. Thank you. I think we had a question in the middle there. So thank you very much. Uh, very short and very basic questions. Two questions. Again, so if you could introduce Oh, sorry. Mark Tüngler from DSW, uh, Germany. Uh, Germany's biggest shareholder or investors association. So, um, two questions. So, uh, investor education or financial education is very uh, hard work. It's time consuming and it's expensive. Uh, and uh, it's linked to the complexity of the products. And shouldn't we work on this topic, uh, then the, the way is not that far. And uh, we are doing a lot of in internet and television but our experience in Germany is that the uh, most or the best way to reach the people and the most impact will come out from uh, normally meetings. And we do about uh, 120 meetings a year and we reach about 50,000 people. And uh, I think it's, it's uh, to, uh, to divide between push and pull. And we see that meetings are the best way to reach the people and, and go into the head. What are your experiences? I know you reach a lot of numbers of people when you go through the internet and television, but it's only one time maybe, 
and the people have to go to the internet site and they have to, to go then when they need the information. What do you think? To, um, yes, we think that it is very important also to go where people are. That's why, for example, and it was a very good experience for us, we go to the consumer association in the region because we know that those people need also information to then, um, to then explain the things to the people uh, who comes to, to them, to the association. So that's why we, we went uh, to the region to, for those uh, session days. And um, what you said about um, complex product is also very interesting because what we say at the IMF is always to the people that when you don't understand one product, you have to, to run away. You have to, to invest in complex product, you have to understand the product. And um, on the, on the um, industry side, we say for two, um, this is really for two complex products with four criteria. When one criteria is uh, there, we, we say that um, the industry don't have to sell those products to retail investors. And on the, um, on the documents, the, um, the advertising doc document for those products, we say that the IMF didn't, didn't see the, 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 the document uh, because it is too complex for the public. Uh, for example, we don't ban a complex product, but for two complex products, we say that this is not for the retail investors. For your question, Jim. But yes, events, and that's why we are also very, very present in the shareholders' events because we know that people want to see us, and it is also very good for us um, for to, to be known because in France, like in other states, it is also not so easy to be known um, from the, the general public. There are people we kn who know us and who, who call the helpline or who send messages to the helpline, but there are also a lot of people who don't know us. Okay, thank you, Julie. Edward, did you add uh, Wardos? Please. Uh, in Portugal, uh, the, the plan has a catalog for uh, uh, financial uh, training actions. We give uh, about four uh, training actions a year. Uh, to a specific segment of the population that can act as multiplier agents, like lawyers, teachers, uh, in, people who work in the consumer protection associations, because we are few uh, and we can't reach uh, the entire population. Working with these agents or the, with this type of agents, uh, maybe we can reach a larger number of the population. Regarding the the financial products, the, the more complex ones, we, we the, secur the Portuguese securities market celebrated with the, the principal uh, financial intermediaries uh, protocol, a gentleman's agreement, uh, in which these uh, banks uh, promised not to uh, com commercialize uh, the most complex products to retail investors. It's it's a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> uh, I work uh, also, I also handle complaints and I can say that the number of complaints regarding this type of product is decreasing. So. Thanks, Eduardo. Um, anyone want to dare a question between this panel and lunch? Um, Josina, do you have a, a, a final question then? Thanks. I'll make it very short. Um, just to 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 go back to slightly to the point on you know um, education in in schools and whether you can send someone from the industry, volunteers, etc. Um, Till from Allen from INSEAD, um, professor of banking, uh, he he 
he he looked at um, behavioral aspects and he said really where we should be going is is to go back to the basics what we have lost in this consumer and capitalist society and that's the the the, the measure to know right and wrong and that in children is very often lost in this sort of in 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 today's society so that is one way of of dealing with it in schools perhaps on the side that in increasing the knowledge of what is right and what is wrong the second aspect um, and that is a sort of for the investor rights and 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 the rights of 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 the of the consumer is is the civic responsibility at, um, aspect of it which is um you know when 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 you um, engage your life savings and you find that they've gone um, because of irresponsible behavior because you didn't know what you were doing or whatever um you actually become a charge on society. So you have a civic responsibility to make sure that you, um, your savings are engaged for the future in a responsible manner. And those two aspects perhaps we can instill in, in the sort of secondary schooling part. But this is a question for the regulators. answer the first uh, question uh, with people uh, from industry at schools. So um, there is, we are really lucky in Lithuania because uh, our public uh, private sector, uh, they are very understanding and taking um, uh, financial education initiatives as the social responsibility initiatives. So they are very understanding and they don't have, they don't make any promotions, they don't have any logos or anything when they go to schools. They are just volunteers that really in depth with the topic. So, uh, and also, um, yeah, I agree that um, it's really important for children to see how how it's how industry it's it's how it works how um, what can you do or what you cannot do, and in regard of responsibility, we see that uh, responsibility has to be shared. A consumer also has to understand what are the risks that it's his decisions. That's why he has to be extra careful. So you. Um, financial education and regulation always has to go hand in hand. There is no other way with it. But a consumer has to understand, at the end of the day, it's going to be his money. So he has to be really careful, shop around, mm, read material. or and The main thing that we also have seminars for, for uh, broad public, and the main thing that we are telling them, if you don't understand, don't sign it. Go somewhere else where you when someone is capable to explain you in the way that you understand and in the right way. Sorry, any, anything else on the regulator side? Julie, please. Mm, I, I agree with you. So, um, in, in, at the IMF also, we think that there is a well-balanced regulatory approach where the protection of investors is really important, the education is really important, and we also try to make um, the in retail investor more aware and more responsible. Um, for the educa educational things in schools, um, I am also agree that um, a very good teachable moment is uh, when you are um, 16, 18, it is also very important. And in France, we partner and also funded an association with which name is in English Finance for All, uh, l'Institut pour l'Education Financière du Public uh, in French. And we funded also this association. This is more global. This is mm, uh, not only for securities. And they have a partnership with the school ministry uh, to give um, educational content uh, to, the, to the teacher and uh, so that teacher could also uh, teach uh, uh, fin financial things and uh, economic things um, in, the, in the schools. <laughs> 